Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Uh, we're here again with Michelle Fabrega and my partner, John Coleman. How are you doing, folks? Good. Uh, yeah. Michelle, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the question of the day is, I'm dating a widower, and what do I need to know? Hmm. So what does somebody expect out of dating a widower? I mean, what what is it unique about men when they've been widowed, widowered, <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, might no. affect their future relationship? Are they dating material? Yeah, yeah. Those are all great, great questions. And... Um, I'd like to go into it in a couple different ways. Um, you know, first of all, obviously it depends on how soon this person has, has lost their spouse. So there's that to take into consideration and it's really a personal choice to decide to get closer to someone, right? It's always a personal choice. So we, you know, we don't know how much, how available they're going to be with us. And so we get to discover that as we're getting to know, um, a, a person new, so it, one thing to really I want to bring to it is just the sensitivity of what the, the gravity of what this means, actually, that someone has been loving someone else for, you know, short time, long time. There's been a whole relationship there before you have show, shown up. And so I like to bring just as much acceptance of that and sensitivity and this person is not going to go away. They're, even though their partner is no longer here and alive, this person doesn't going to go away in their life. And so you really want to be mindful and sensitive that you're joining, you know, later in the party here with this person. And um, just to, that's really important to keep in mind. That's, that's a really good point. Um, and that's true with anybody uh, who's, you know, lost a loved one. Um, including a child, I think, or anything else, but particularly with a, a spouse, if they've lost a spouse, you really have to be sensitive towards that and recognize that, uh, uh, I like the way you put it, you're joining the party later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And also, when a man, when a, uh, uh, you're addressing basically a, a widow looking to uh, date a widower, uh, is there much difference uh, the other way around, uh, the psychology of the man who uh, is a widower uh, looking to date a uh, widow? Well, I think it's pretty similar, as similar as any individual unique people are in getting together. So, But it's just, I think it's that's the key point is really to be sensitive to that and to not expect that they're not going to be talking about their you know former spouse they're not going to be maybe sad at times or certain memories will come up and to not allow that space for that for them to share is to not accept part of who they are widows uh, widows and widowers are not necessarily uh, and men and women i'm really talking about really uh, have a difference how they react to the death of a spouse, don't they? I mean, I, I, I'm, my hunch is that because of men's testosterone levels, depending on their age, uh, they'll want to get out there and start dating much sooner. Uh, even though they've lost a spouse, um, the yeah. idea of getting a, 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 a new spouse is not necessarily a bad thing for them. Whereas women, I would think, you have to correct me here, uh, tend to say, well, that's it. That part of my life is over. Um, I'm moving on. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with you in generalities. I, I certainly don't have the statistics um, right at the ready to, to answer that um, definitively. But I do think that's true. I mean, I think that men are often happier, right, in marriages and in partnerships. So they tend to seek someone out sooner than maybe a woman might. And, and I just, I want to say there's no right or wrong or okay or not okay. There's no timeline here. It's all really personal and individual. And I think that our society has sort of a sense that, oh, they can't be dating already. It's been, t it's too soon. You know, it's like, well, life is short. And I like to just encourage people to 
notice what, what they want, what's right for them. And obviously, if you're dating someone who recently lost a spouse, I mean, you have to recognize they may or may not be available for the kind of relationship you want to build right away. It could take some time. Or they might withdraw at some point and say, you know what, I can't do this right now. I, I don't, I'm not ready to be intimate with someone else. And, but that's always true in a relationship, right? When you're getting to know somebody, things can change. Well, you bring up a good point, and that is dating. Uh, this is the question really about dating. Uh, and and when you're dating somebody, you're discovering who they are. Yes. Um, and so, of course, we're celebrating Act Two, so we're talking about uh, generally people in their second half of their life, over 50. And uh, when you're over 50, you've had a, the first half of your life has been filled with experiences, whether it's a spouse and a marriage or whether it's being single. Um, and you bring, you have issues at 55 and at 60, you have issues and people you date need to find out what they are and how they can deal with them. Just like you need to find out who they are and how you relate to them. So the dating part of it is significant, I think. Uh, but it's like all dating. You, you're still, you're discovering a, a new person. Are they going to be a friend? Are they going to be a lover? Um, the, the, the widow widower issue just complicates it more. Yeah, I think there's just there's can be a lot of tenderness there. Of course, there can be tenderness if you know a divorce didn't go well and somebody you know somebody left someone unexpectedly or whatever. That's another another kind of pain, right? But um, it, it is it is. I think we tend to think that once someone's no longer in their life, we don't want to hear about them anymore. And I think that's the, the, the key piece when you're dating a widower is that to do that is to really close off it, something significant and you're not really, you're not accepting your, your partner fully. And that doesn't really go well going forward, in my opinion. It's not going to bring the kind of richness and dynamic relationship that's possible. So I think it's, it's actually, and, and you talk about issues, we, you know, we'll have those issues from the past. You know, people like to say, oh, this baggage. It's like, I say it's like it's part of life's experiences that we've had. It's what we've learned and what we've, you know, overcome. And these are beautiful things to celebrate what we've experienced, what didn't go well, what we've learned from that. It's like that's why the second act can be, like you guys say, amazing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great advice. Thank you. Also, Thank you for putting uh, it into perspective. Also, um, uh, not for today because uh, we can go on for probably another half hour, an hour. But uh, so uh, this this segment talked about uh, the dating of a widow and widower and what to expect. And uh, it seems in a lot of ways that uh, it's like dating, but with, with people who have a longer history than when we were younger and teenagers and in and, and our uh, the 20s and 30s. Uh, and then uh, another segment I think uh, that deserves its own amount of time is, uh, if you get more serious about that, how the families accept or don't accept. Right. Uh, the uh, Right, how you all come together and right. fit with, yeah. And I've, yeah. Seen, I've seen it go both ways. I'm sure you've had a lot of experience, but let's leave that for another segment. Uh, I would uh, like to uh, remind people that uh, if they'd like to get in touch with you, that uh, they can probably go to your website of www.michellefabrica.com and um, get in touch with you that way. And uh, there, I want to mention, Art, that there's some very interesting articles uh, on that website. Michelle, I know you're going to add some more articles, but the, the three or four that I read were really fascinating. So mm, they're a good reference. They'll address everything you talk about, but uh, a couple of good articles. Thank you. Yeah. And I want to say one more thing to discovery because you talked about discovering this other person, right? When you're dating, but you're also discovering yourself, who you are now in relation to this other person. How am I with this person? Wow. Yeah. I, I really get lit up by this person or wow, this person makes me feel uncomfortable about this parts of myself. So it's really a two way street and that's the, the fun of dating. It can be like a more, uh, more an adventure, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and as Art said, we'll we'll discuss dating a whole lot more uh, in your videos because that's a big topic. But particularly, I think for people over fifty. Yeah. Anyway, uh, great to see you again, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next segment with uh, one of our favorite 
uh, regular contributors, Michelle Fabrica. Thank you. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.